You're back. I'm back. Welcome back. It's picture class, episode eight. Isn't this great? I made a little line there. Now I'm gonna ask you for a little bit of your time. Ooh. Our film today is Let's Make a Dream from 1936, also known as Faisons Un Rive. Ready. I don't speak French, but I did go to France once. It was kind of fun. 7.1 on the internet movie mm, database. It has no rating on Rotten Tomatoes since not enough critics have seen it or even reviewed it. It's not even talked about. This film is uh, now available through Arrow on DVD and Blu-ray, I believe, through a four-pack from Sasha Guitry. Uh, it is also available on the iTunes store, and I think it's available on Prime for a rental. It was on Mubi. It was so long since I've done reviews, it's probably not available on any streaming service currently other than rentals. Um, this film has a interesting story. Sasha Guitry was a very witty playwright. In fact, this is his quote. When a man steals your wife, there is no better revenge than to let him have her. Sasha Guitry was very theatrical. He was very humorous. Uh, he was very big into the stage, loved stage, loved comedies. He had done everything. And when film came around, his wife, Jacqueline and Delubac, who is also in this film, suggested that he do films of his stage adaptations. He didn't really think much of it, and because of this, we now have this film. Uh, this film, this play, was adapted numerous times over the years. I think they still do it in France, actually. It's uh, very well known, but outside of uh, France, Sasha Kitri is not very well known. Uh, they did a box set 10 years ago, I think. It was called Presenting Sasha Guitry, like the Criterion Collection discovered him. Those pretentious people. I'm kidding, I love them. But in my uh, French film class, my teacher, who was not as big of a fan, uh, showed us the film that was not in that set, which it was eight films he did in um, about four years. Eight, that's a lot, of his uh, adaptations. And he chose this one versus the one that Sasha Gitch is probably best known for is The Story of a Cheat. Orson Welles was influenced by that film himself in his second feature film, The Magnificent Embersons. Uh, why? Because before the movie even starts, Sasha Gitri shows you all the actors, and he's literally talking over it. He's like, I directed this movie, I did this, and this is the 1930s, so they hadn't really done things like this. He was changing expectations. He's like those people are pretending to read, you know, he, he was com commenting on the fact that they were acting. Um, he also, this film breaks the fourth wall a lot because he looks at the camera because this is based off a of play, so the play you do talk to the audience sometimes. If it's a little too theatrical for you, then I apologize. Um, it is very short. It's about an hour and 19 minutes. I remember we saw this in class, and I think I was the one that loved it the most. I was just obsessed with this movie. Um, I had a crappy copy of it for years, and now it's on HD. It's digital. Don't even need discs anymore. What a world! Am I right? Okay. Also features in the opening scene, which they added to give the film a little bit more length. It's a dance, uh, not, it's like a party, a social life party. It has Michel Simon, Simon, Michel, I don't know. I know who he is, I just don't know how to say his name. He's been in Port of Shadows, Le, La, Le, 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 the one by Jean Vigo. Jean Vigo did Zero D Conduct. If you don't know what the hell I'm talking about, you know nothing about French film. But the history of film starts in France, if we remember from episode six. So uh, Michel Simon was uh, in plenty of very important films, um, and he was uh, teamed up again with Sasha Guitry in the 50s to do La Poisson, Poison. Also Marcel Carnet in The Port of Shadows. He was a very good actor, and just a very brief scene of him in here, but it's also very cool to note that he is in this film. The premise of this movie is he invites uh, his friend over and his wife, knowing that his friend has to be somewhere at 4 o'clock, so he invites him over at 3.45, under the pretense he's hiding in the bathroom and he knew the friend would leave, so he could propose, profess his love to Jacqueline de Le Bac, who is his actual wife, and he's hoping she'd come over that night. So the 
major meat of the film is in the middle part where he is waiting for her to come and he basically just has this 20 minute monologue which is just the whole movie it's just the best part of the movie and he's just talking and he's having conversations with himself he's imagining her come and he's thinking of all the things that can happen he's like oh she's gonna come here she's gonna come stop no. and he's almost writing her coming to him uh eventually uh he calls her because she's not coming and then he keeps getting the phone lines crossed and he's getting pissed off he's exaggerating he's like i've been on the line for two hours what the it was half hour and then uh he's just talking to her and eventually she just stops talking then you see no one's holding the phone and then she sneaks in the room and as he is pretending to kiss her she kisses him and there you go this is also made in France in the 1930s, so it is not subject to the Hayes Code. The Hayes Code was made in, I think, 1931? But it wasn't really enacted until 1934. That's why if you see movies, they'll call them pre-code, or sometimes pre-code classics. Some of these movies aren't really that good. They just have lots of sexual undertones, and you're like, they did this in the 30s? Yes, they didn't always have the beds separated. They had whole movies were about the sex. They got so tired of sex, the brain office was like, we had enough, no more. And then writers got very clever of how to get around sex and talking about it that they would just fade with that, you know, Hollywood kiss that we talked about before. But this one, they kiss and then they fade to the next day or and then they're sitting in their robes. So obviously some uh, coitus had taken place. Um, and then they wake up the next morning to find they slept all night. Oh no, she didn't go home. So then he's in trouble. He's like, oh God, what are we going to do? And then the doorbell rings. Oh no, it's the husband. The husband comes in. Oh, what's going to happen? What's he going to say? He's like, I didn't go home last night. He's like, what? So then he has to talk to Mr. Geetry about an excuse to come up for his wife that he didn't go home because he was cheating on her while she was cheating with him. So it's a very fun, uh, very fun movie about, you know, love, uh, <laughs> infidelity if you would call it uh in this class that i took it i watched the other two films that were not part of this arrow box set part of the criterion set so it was um desiree and quadril yeah you're not expected to know what it is but i came up with the infidelity trilogy i wrote a paper on the infidelity trilogy because all three starred sasha guitry as well as his wife jacqueline de Lebac. And the first one was Desiree, where he was a, um, he was a butler, and she was a famous, or she was a high society lady, and they kind of tease that there's something going to happen, but it never happens. So it's just like, all right, so it's just a seduction. It's a tease of it happening. And Let's Make a Dream is the middle part of our trilogy, where they actually do the deed, but that's it. They're just cheating. You know, you don't know marriage, they kind of just, I don't know. At the end of the movie, he sends them off somewhere for two days. And she's like, how much time? He's like, we got more than forever. We have two days. So who knows if the relationship ever lasted. They did not. Uh, they were divorced at some point. Not really point of the program that we're talking about. Next would be Quadrille, which was the third of this infidelity trilogy where they actually wind up getting married at the end. So it kind of, they do a swap places. It's the two couples and then like, you know, they kind of swap. And if you've known anything before, like I was saying about the 1930s films, this, that one felt more like it because in the 1930s, everyone was either rushed to get married or get divorced because there was just no sex. It was just, no, you're married or you're not. That, that's how it was in film. It was just a no-no. So the Hayes Code, pre-code film. So if you see films pre-1931, whole different ballgame. There's only about four years of sound films in there. So, you know. Some things are a little suggestive. Uh, the original Maltese Falcon, the first one, not the third one that everyone knows, the first one, uh, that one features, uh, I think, a woman in a bathtub, which was a no-no, so they later redid the movie, even though the redo was a little bit better, was it as accurate? Let's Make a Dream. Uh, this film has always been something I like to show people, just to give them a sense of my sense of humor, specifically the scene of him just monologuing to himself just sitting in there and just imagining the girl coming to his house this is something it's very writery it's very actory it's very theatrical so Sasha Dietrich was a writer director actor um, as I pretend to be sometimes not really all that wonderful 
but uh, I want to go for something a little more comical because I think uh, the next three films may not be as comedic, might go into different tones, so I want to bring another comedy into the mix. It's also a film that you probably won't hear too many people talk about elsewhere. I said too many, I didn't say it's the only place to see it. Quality attempted, come on, like us share us friends. <laughs> Do something! Okay, so anyway, uh, that is 1936. So we have three decades after this. We have the 1950s, the 2010s, and the 2020s. We have just a few weeks to go for picture class. So uh, if you have any recommendations, qualityattempted at gmail.com. Uh, I will be happy to get to that as soon as I am done with the next three films, and uh, we shall see where we go from there. Give us a like if you like this. Give us a share if you think somebody might think this jerk is funny. This one. Thanks for coming back, y'all. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right.